It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns, and it comes your way next. On the shores of Lake Erie, a name simply for the franchise who resides within it. Our coverage of the NFL brings us to Cleveland Browns Stadium. Thanks for joining us, everyone. With my partner, Brock Heward, I'm Kate Scott. And like so many matchups in the NFL, Brock, our focus goes right to the quarterbacks in this one. Both of these guys, players who've been around the league now for some time, they definitely established themselves as veterans who know how to win football games. Yeah, I think the word of the day, Kate, is definitely experience. Two yep. guys who've been through the season several times over have seen a lot at this point in their career and been through quite a bit on the field. All that experience is stored up there right between the ears. <laughs> and the one who is more skilled at leveraging that experience more than likely is going to come away with the win. Ball is teed up. Chris Boswell to do the honors. And off we go from Cleveland. Return coming from the six. His return gets him to the 32-yard line before he's taken down. So here are the Browns now, headed out for their first drive. Bringing him out to number one pick in 2015, a former league leader in passing, it's Jameis Winston. Don't think for a second, Kate, he hasn't heard the noise. Read the comments from the keyboard warriors who say they just want somebody else leading this team. But let me let you in on a little secret. Those criticisms, they can fuel quarterbacks. Make that chip on the shoulder even bigger to prove people wrong and to show I really do belong in this league. So their offense out now to get this game started. It's first and ten. They're going play action. That's to his back, Nick Chubb. And he's up to the 35-yard line as they reel him in. We'll need to pause now after our first play. One of the D linemen injured on it, and medical staff out now to look at him. Second down now, seven to go. Throwing is Winston. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop it. And that pushes them back. Third down coming up. And now this defense is on that sack board and sets up a pretty good chance here on third down. It's a little bit like blood in the water with sharks when it comes to taking sacks. You can feel it as a quarterback. Once that defense gets one, they're hungry for another. Third and ten. Can this offense get it done? Off the play fake, he'll throw. Almost an opening drive interception, but that winds up on the ground. Incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down. I'll tell you this, Kate. They doubled him knowing that was where the pass was likely headed. That's doing your homework. A bit surprising QB still threw it in that direction with how well the defense had that one covered. The Browns looking to punt on fourth down, so on comes their southpaw, Corey Bohorquez, to handle it. It's fielded at the 14. And before that return amounts to much, they bring him down. So the Steeler offense getting out there for its opening drive of the game. Leading them out, a man in his 13th NFL season and rising quickly up the career leaderboards, Russell Wilson. Kate, Russell Wilson's one of the NFL's most experienced quarterbacks. He's also one of the winningest quarterbacks, even with a couple bumps in the road in Denver. Remember, over that decade in Seattle with Pete Carroll and the Legion of Boom, there wasn't a quarterback that won more games in the history of the league over the first 10 years. Nine times to the Pro Bowl as well. Put a supporting cast around him, Give him a run game in the defense. And Russell Wilson still knows very well how to play this game. And they're going to bring him down just beyond the 30 at the 31. You know you love some of my buzzwords, kid. I know you do. And this one, this one was about Will Power. He got to rock a long way from the chains and put his teammates on his back for a heck of a run and a great try at that first down. In a good spot here, second and inches. Russ off the play fake. 
Flushed out of the pocket. Oh, he was on the move, but so is the defense, and they take him down. And that pushes him back, third down, coming up. And right there is the danger, Kate, when you put the ball in the air. How many times do we see these coordinators, when you get a nice run, right, you gain some steam on the ground, you stick with the ground game. They don't, they call the pass, and the defense reacts, and reacts well with a sack. Motioning one of the tight ends. Wilson to throw on third and two. Complete beyond the marker. And he's going to get this up close to the 40 before going out. Give him eight yards on the play. And that's a Steelers first down. When you see play action, do all you can to get your eyes to the tight end. Because that's their bread and butter. That play action gives him time off the line, helps chip a rusher, or even helps sell that fake. And then when he releases, he gets out, he gets some leverage. He gets to that edge before the defender can cover him. Wilson now, first and ten. Pass taken in by Fryermew. And they're going to bring him down just on the other side of midfield. And it's a pickup of 14 yards as the chains reset. You want to become a quarterback's best friend? Do that. Turn a short little gain, a short little pass into some yards after catch, and that quarterback will find you again. First and 10 from a yard shy of midfield. Shotgun snap for Wilson. He's going to loft one deep to the left. And this is going to end up incomplete. He really aired it out there on first down, but just couldn't make the connection. Just something off in the rhythm of the passing game on that one, Kate. Time to recalibrate and keep throwing it to get back on track. Couldn't connect on first. It's second down. Once more, it's Wilson. This one is tipped away and incomplete. Good positioning to make a play on it. That forces third down. I think it's safe to say that without that ball being tipped, we are looking at a big game. It's a missed opportunity to push that offense, but an even better play defensively to deny the throw. No connection on the last play, and now it's third down. Sticking in the air with Wilson. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop him. And the defense comes through to back him up ahead of fourth down. Couple sacks on the opening drive. You better get to fix-it mode in a hurry. And I'm talking about on the sidelines. I'm talking as a quarterback. You've got to solve this pass rush because we know one thing about guys in this league defensively. When they get a couple sacks, they can smell it. And they're going to raise the intensity to another level. So a punt coming up on fourth down. And it's against Belgium native Corliss Waitman with the honors. And oh, just a hair too much on that kick. The punt lands in the end zone. This one's coming out to the 20. Second drive coming up for this Cleveland offense. They didn't start the game off like they wanted, Brock. Still searching for that opening first down as they take the field a second time. And the drive will start out with a first and 10. Now the first carry for Nick Chubb. And they love to see him fighting forward, but he only gets him three. You know, they got some positive yards. That's a good thing. But too many plays like that, it just is too hard to pile together, get first downs against the better defenses in this league. Second down now, seven to go. From the 23. Oh, tried forcing it to the slant. It's intercepted. Picked up by Peyton Wilson. Such a huge point of emphasis for so many defenses clogging up the middle of the field. They saw that receiver enter the middle and did a terrific job of fading the quarterback into the throw and an even better job of forcing the interception. Here comes the Pittsburgh offense for their second drive of the game. And they're set up well inside of enemy territory, and they've got a short field after that pick. They've got first down from the 31. A 
handoff for Harris, running right. And he's caught after a gain of about two. Hauled to the ground by Jordan Hicks. He gets a couple on first, and they'll come up second and eight. You know, not a ton of yards, but still showing that commitment to the ground game. The type of run that keeps the defense from loading up in coverage and focusing entirely on that passing game. This is Harris on second down. And he works this to the 15 before they make the stop. We'll get a stoppage now. Looks like we have someone banged up after that run in need of some attention. They have themselves another first and ten. Harris wants more. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. I don't know, Kate. I didn't think he had it. But that back did. He knew exactly where he had to get for the first down. Pops up right away and signals first down. This offense in position now. It's first and goal. Taking the handoff, now Wilson. And he sails that one over the end zone. Well, you've got to have a short memory in the NFL. Incompletions happen. Now you've got to make the adjustment and go get the next one. So the incompletion on first, here's second and goal. Now Wilson on the play fake. And got his man. That's a Pittsburgh touchdown. The Steelers parlay the interception into points. George Pickens the touchdown. All right, partner, what do you think? Was that a design read, or did he just see space and he was reacting more on the old quarterback instinct there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think yes on both of them. And that play happens so fast that it really is instincts on both sides. Now we'll pause. The officials want to take a good look at this and confirm it was indeed a touchdown. At least right here is where having all those camera angles comes into play. We're going to get a much clearer picture thanks to all the shots we've got. Yep, technology, everybody's friend right now. We get to watch it again and again, unlike these officials who got to see it once in real time. We just have to see, is there clear enough evidence to overturn the call that was made down there on the field? No change to the call on the field. So that play is going to remain a touchdown. Chris Boswell for the point after. Right down the middle. It's good. And the Steelers will jump out to a 7-0 lead. Boswell on to send this away. Fielded at the seven. Now bottle him up as he gets the return to the 30. The Browns getting their offense out there. And it's far from the first time we're seeing this unit head out, Bronk. But what we have been seeing so far in this opening half, well, we haven't seen much in terms of yardage. No, it's like they've written a few lyrics, but nowhere close to a song yet. First and ten now from the 30. They begin the drive with Chubb. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, he's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. Back to the line they go. It's second down.
Staying on the ground here with Chubb. And finally, they're able to bring him to the ground. He picks up eight on the run, and now they're going to have third and four. Hey, look, Kate, you can't just ask one tackler to go mano y mano and stop this guy. You've got to have the cavalry coming. One guy makes a hit, the others are there to clean up and pile on, because one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to run right through you. From the gun on third down. He has the first over the middle. And he'll get it up to the 44. A nine-yard gain and good for a first down. You know, they call that the money down for a reason. Because you're just simply not going to last long in the NFL if you don't convert a good portion of your third downs. It's the money down. And nice to see them roll the dice and continue the series. From the 44-yard line now, first and ten. Here's Winston to the air. He beams one deep right side. And the defender redirects that deep shot. Nicely done. Incomplete. I know a DB in the stat sheet loves to see INT and not PBU. But as soon as he realized a pick was impossible, he does the next best thing and knocks it away. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. A give to Chubb, running left. And he's brought down for a loss. I talked to a bunch of different GMs, Kate, especially around draft time, and they all say the same thing. Linebackers are so hard to find. It's hard to transition from the college game that's in so much space to this game where you've got to play in a phone booth yet, have that explosiveness to chase a play on the outside down like that linebacker just did. Throwing on third and long. Finds a seam down the middle. This is marked down right along that 40-yard line. That one goes for 17 yards and moves the chains. I may love watching a great thrower, but I love watching a well-done route too, Kate. Make that guy think you're trying to stack him only to drop your hips and cut right inside. Some good work to help reset those chains. Here's Winston. Has him on the quick hitter. And he gets it down to the 35 before stepping out. Well, that's a pretty similar result to a first down run play. Moves it forward, keeps you on schedule, and makes second and third down a whole lot easier to manage. Halfway to the marker, it's second and five. They run it from the gun with Chubb. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. What was supposed to move the chains or at least make third down easier to handle instead? Well, did the exact opposite here, Kate. It now makes this third down a whole lot trickier to figure out. They come to the line here, and this is third and six. Winston to throw it. He'll dump this one off to his running back complete. And they bring him down around the 34. You can earn your money in the NFL in all sorts of different ways, but defensively, in a league where you're just not hitting as much in training camp, you're not tackling as much as they got to in the old days, when you can make a play in the open field, keep them short like that, I promise you some money will follow. And this kick is good. He needed to get all of it there, and he did. And it's dropped back down now to a four-point game. A lot of them may make it look automatic, but you get this deep, and those field goals are far from a certainty. It took all his concentration, every bit of his strength, to send that puppy through. We've got a good one here. They've cut the lead to four as they send it away. For Daryl Patterson, now to return. The return manages to get just beyond the 30. The Steelers offense headed out. And I think they'd be content doing everything the same as their prior drive and getting another touchdown here.
They've got first down from the 31. They'll start with a give to Harris. It's a gain of three for him. That brings up second and seven. Hey, we know running the ball in the NFL is hard, and that play pretty indicative of it. Here's the key, though. At the end of the game, those type of plays got to be in the minority, and the majority have got to do some damage. Second down now, seven to go. From the 34. Duke the defender. And they push this down to the opposing 47-yard line. It goes as a gain of 19 yards. And he'll bring up a Pittsburgh first down. That's just great instincts. Go air it out on second down rather than just play conservative and run it. They hit a weak point in the coverage and don't need to worry about third down at all. It's Pickens on the slant. And he's able to reach the 40 on that play. That is the epitome of staying on schedule. That kind of completion right there on first down. Well, it opens up the entirety of the playbook for second down. And the third and short in your back pocket, you can get even more aggressive and take that shot. They'll toss it to Harris. Has a lane inside the 25. And he heads out of bounds. Great pickup on that run. Give him 30 yards on that one. And that's a Steelers first down. You know he'll never shy away from embracing contact on a play right up the gut. Come on. You know getting that toss in the open field is so much more fun. And on that play, well, certainly more exciting for all of us to watch, too. All set up now for first and ten. They give to Harris from the gun. And he's going to get taken down near the goal line. It's a gain down to the one. He gets him nine on the ground. A good pickup and a second down. I'm not kidding you, Kate. A run of that length at the NFL level, honestly, is the equivalent of a run of 15-plus at the high school level. It's hard in the run game to make yards, and they just got a very successful one. And he's in for the touchdown. The Steelers get six more on their early advantage. Najee Harris, the touchdown. So Brock, this offense looking sharp here in the first half as they extend their lead. You know, and when things are going well, sometimes you really just get into a groove. And this is a unit that's putting the pieces together. Boswell to add the PAT. The point after splits the uprights. And the Steelers drive their lead to 11. Now Boswell on to send this away. Here's a return from the seven. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. The Cleveland offense back out and getting set for the drive. And down double digits, Brock. Field goals like we saw in their last drive aren't going to move the needle as much as they need to. They're out and set, first and ten. To throw, here's Winston. That's more on the quick slant. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. I love throwing on first down. And when you see a first down pass just like that, it's taking advantage of a matchup you plan for and you go out and execute. First and ten from the 41. 
Judy will go in motion right. Shove here on first down. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. Kate, I know you can see that smile on my face as we stand next to each other. Sure, I love that run. But I'm thinking about some great running backs. In fact, Corey Dillon, who created a lot of negative grades on my play sheet because I didn't want to carry out no fake. I wanted to watch the damage he could do like we just saw. The ball's out. The ball's out. He lost it. Oh, and they pick it up. Time to push for that marker. And he's brought down right in the neighborhood of that 40-yard line. Almost the impact play this defense was searching for, but they could only get half the job done, partner. Fumble forced, but they couldn't recover. I'll tell you what else it forces, though. That coordinator, that play caller on the other side, now got a little bit of doubt about his ball handlers. Got to have better ball security than that. Here's Chubb on second down. Broke through the tackle, and he's out of bounds just short of the 30. And that play goes for eight yards, and it keeps this drive moving. That's certainly a spot where you could be more aggressive, Kate, if you wanted to take your shots. But some coaches, even the bolder ones, will take the safe play first when they get it from time to time. No third down required now. They've got first down from the 31. Winston looking to throw. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop him. And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. Sometimes I wish everybody could feel what that feels like. <laughs> when you're a QB and you just feel the air in the pocket getting sucked out and you know there's no escape, it can be just one heck of a deflating feeling. Not for that defense who puts a sack on the board. All right, here we go. Second down. Trying again, following the sack. Oh, they're on him, and he's dropped again. And the back-to-back -back sacks. Nice work by the defense there. Sets him up with a third down. Kate, I've seen a, a one-step drop. I've seen a three, a five, a seven. Some of the boots and play actions get more depth. But a 20-step drop? <laughs> That's not going to cut it. Except for this defense, it just adds a whole bunch of negative yards to that play. So not an enviable spot here as they come up on third and very long. Winston now. And he just gets rid of this one, but unfortunately, that means fourth down coming up. So often, so many of these games in the NFL, well, they come down to a play or two, and third downs are critical. Whether it's in a close game or already out of hand, their coach wants to see them convert those. The Browns are lined up to punt. Calvin Austin on the return for the Steelers. He broke 50 on his first punch and looks to have done the same here. And they were giving him no chance to return this one. It soars over the sideline deep in enemy territory. Looks like a right around the eight. The Steelers and Najee Harris making their return to the field. And that front is really going to need to buckle down and provide some more opposition because he's gotten off to an excellent start here. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. A carry by Harris here to start the drive. And it's a nice gain off a really good effort there just to stay upright. A nice six-yard pickup. They're going to have second and four. This dude was just not going to be stopped. Not by the first defender. Heck, not even by the second one who was able to bring him down. No, it took a few shots before this crew could finally get this beast down. Wilson now off the play action. And he's not quite that fast. Let him just a bit too much. That's incomplete. Well, you certainly want those throws to be automatic. Every team, if you're going to be efficient, you've got to hit those passes in the short to intermediate zone to effectively move the ball in this league. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. Now here's Russ. 
It's caught. Warren. This gets up past the 20. That one ends up a gain of six. And he'll bring up a Pittsburgh first down. This dude just simply got a nose for the marker no matter how they get him the ball, Kate. Hand it to him, and he sniffs out that first down. Get it to him on a screen, and it's no different. He surges ahead and keeps this drive moving. It's caught. That's Mike Williams. And he'll take it up to the 30 before being brought down. They come through with a nice gain there. Gain of 10, first down. <laughs> That is what elite offenses are all about. Why worry about three downs when you need only one? Move the chains in one play and keep driving that defense backwards. Completed here to Pickens. He gets it forward for a gain of three. That was Martin Emerson with a stop that time. Every once in a while, it's fine to be conservative on first down, especially when you get enough to stay on schedule and get a little something coming out of it, too. Second down now, seven to go. Now an inside handoff to Harris. And he's stopped cold by that defensive front. No gain on that one, and now it's third and eight. That'll be the end of one in this AFC North battle. It's a two-score game early. We'll return to Cleveland Browns Stadium after this. Second quarter all queued up and ready to go. It's Steeler football. They've been moving it well, but face a third down here. He's on the move. He'll make a bid for it on the ground. Wow, they get a big old 32 yards out of that play, as well as a new set of downs. As long as these are the results he's getting, they're going to be just fine with him calling his own number. He does such a good job of seeing the field and knowing when it's his time to take it himself. Down inside the 40 now with a first down following that last play. Running behind center with Harris. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. I know from the position of the quarterback, Kate, sometimes you hand that ball, you put it in the belly of the running back, and you send him right into the teeth of a buzzsaw. You can feel it from the jump, and that call from the defense, well, it came at the perfect time. Second down here, another give to Harris. And this is pushed ahead for a gain of five. From the secondary, Grant Delpit on the tackle. It's a five-yard gain, and that brings up third and seven. That run's not going to turn many heads, but at the end of the year, I promise you, if you average over five yards a run, you can be a pro bowler. Let's see what they draw up on this third and seven. So now they're going to throw with Wilson. Catch made by Austin. And that tackle stops him after a solid game. Those kind of completions are so frustrating, Kate. <laughs> it's like a putt. You got it online, you feel good about it, it's going in the hole. But you never want to leave it short. Offense staying out there, it's fourth and one. Russ now from the gun. That's cut beyond the marker. And he's brought down at the 17-yard line. And that's a gain of 10. And staring at a turnover on downs, Brock, they pick up the first instead. Oh, so close to getting off the field. But the fourth down conversion keeps that defense out there. That was their shot to end this possession, to sit on the bench, to get their breath. And now they're going to have to buckle down and force another fourth down. It's taken in by Washington. And they get this down to the 7-yard line. I can't tell you how nice it is to have a big, trustworthy tight end in the passing game. Such great size to have, and he forces those defenses to find a way to try to match up when they can't. Options are open here. It's second and inches. Going right side. Harris with it. And he's brought down for a loss. Kate, it's amazing how fast these guys are on the field and how fast your fortunes can turn. 
Second and short run. You're feeling good about yourself. But with a negative play, well, now comes a critical third down. All plays on the table here for third and three. Staying on the ground with Harris. And he drives this forward to the six. Four yards on the play, and that picks up a first and goal. Okay, you know me, I can't resist. I thought we might have needed the old Gene Steratore index card down there. <laughs> Make it a really close measurement to see if he got the first down or not. But in the end, well, the right call was made. He got just enough to move the chains. Going to the ground again on first. And they try to power it forward, but only a couple of yards there. Hey, I get it on first and goal, right? A lot of teams like to be conservative and, and limit risk. Even if a run is stopped short, you still got two, sometimes three downs to play with. Still chances to get these final four yards. It's second and goal. Harris can't fight past that line. They stop him at the three. Well, you haven't given up the goal line yet, but this offense is moving closer and closer. Now might be the time defensively to get a little more aggressive, try to stick them with a the loss and make a difficult fourth down decision. So now here's third and goal. No run with Harris. And once again, he doesn't manage much before getting brought down. They maybe get a yard there, still can't manage to run it in. That's going to bring up fourth and goal. Well, the defense, they couldn't stop him for a loss, but they denied him the goal line at least. Now we get to see, right, decision time, one of these critical decisions of whether or not they're going to go for an all-or-nothing fourth down play. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that extends their lead to 14. Well, that's the type of long, sustained drive that takes some of the starch out of your opponent. The only negative is that the kicking team was out there for a field goal and not an extra point. But they do come away with three. Now Boswell on to send this away. Return starts at the three. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. Back out now comes the Browns offense. And they'll try for better results this time around, Brock, after they had to punt it away last time out. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Winston. That's incomplete left side. Looking for his wide receiver there. And now they face second down. Can't cover it much better than that really well covered Kate on that play. There just simply was not a window for him to sneak that throw in. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. Off the play fake. He's going to throw. Finds a man, right side. He's just one of those guys, Kate. Even when he's not open, he's still a target thanks to that physicality and his ability to just play bully ball. They don't like forcing into coverage, but sometimes when you got a bully like him that can create space, you just find a way to get him the ball. Let's see what they draw up on a third and seven. Throwing is Winston. That's caught for the first. And he made a bid for midfield there, but stopped on his own side at the 49. They get 18 yards out of it and a new set of downs. Every tight end worth his salt wanted this. Really craved man-to-man -man coverage. The best of them, give me man-to-man -man coverage and I'm going to beat you. I was around Dallas Clark and Indy, one of the best. You play man-to-man, -man, he's going to find a way to out-leverage you, separate from you, and make a play just as that tight end did. Job running out of the gun. And he's going to have this one down to the 43 on a good run. It's an eight-yard pickup, and they're going to have second and two next. Well, that doesn't net a first down. You get yards like that in the run game, 
you will take it in the NFL. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Again, it's Chubb. And he's dropped just short of the marker, maybe a yard away. Okay, that's a run that's whole hum on the stat sheet. But if you see a bigger play on the ground later on, it'll largely be because of a play just like that one, softening up the front and opening the door for a bigger gap in the future. Third down, one yard to go. Chum going for the marker. And he's able to get this down to the 36. Five yards on that play and enough for a new set of downs. Win the early battle. Get a little leverage. Low man wins off the line, and that's all that was needed to ensure that first down right there. First down, ball at the 36. Changing things up. They're going to throw now. That one complete to Najoku. And this is down to the 28 before the defense halts it. Quarterbacks will look for their tight end short in just about any situation. They take away the deeper options. Now well, there's their consistent source of positive yardage, the trusty tight end. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Judy there to grab it. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. Sure seems like he knew exactly what he wanted, and he got it going right where he wanted to with the ball off the snap. Up to the line, and they're set. First and ten. Here's Chubb up the middle. And he's able to rip off a chunk of red zone yardage to the ten. Pickup of eight on the run, and that sets up second and two. So much to like about that run, Kate, particularly what he was able to get out of it. The defense, I think, feels a little fortunate they were able to track him down before an even bigger run and crossing that first down marker. Shotgun snap, they're going to throw. The throw is caught. And he drives this forward to the six. Four yards on the play, and that picks up a first and goal. I'm sure coach and play caller doesn't mind making the job a little bit easier. You know, play calling's a lot simpler and easier when you count on the offense to move the chains on those early downs. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. Here's Chubb. And the power play up the gun only results in two yards. Okay, all right. There's a little progress on first and goal. You keep it safe, you push a little closer, and now you're set up for what you want to do on second down. So from the three, here's second and goal. Judy will go in motion right. Chubb. And he runs it across. Touchdown! The Browns make it a one-score game in the first half. It's a Nick Chubb touchdown. Well, great work there, Brock. They weathered the storm, and now they've gotten themselves right back into this ball game. Anybody who's played this game has been here before. The game doesn't start the way you want. You're in a big hole, and all you can do is climb out of it. And the words of Pete Carroll resonate. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. On comes Dustin Hopkins to try the extra point. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Browns chop the lead in half. It's down to seven. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Starting from the five. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. The Steelers and this running back headed back out for a new series. And the last drive did end in points. Not as many as they wanted, though. They had to settle for that field goal despite advancing the football pretty well.
They'll get this drive started. First and ten. A handoff for Harris running right. Doesn't get much beyond the line. A yard at most from the secondary. Grant Delpit on the tackle. Just a gain of one, and that brings up second and nine. I think one thing you learn, Kate, when you transition from college to the NFL, not every run is going to be a big play. Some of them, well, they're just destined to end in a minimal gain, and some of them will set up that critical play action for later. He's corralled after a modest four-yard gain. Miles Garrett coming in for the stop. You make that call to just give yourself a fighting chance on third down, Kate. Take at least a little bite of the big meal between them and the first down marker. And that, that should make this upcoming call a little less daunting. So now here's third and five. Wilson now from the gun. Quick slant, that's Williams. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. That's what we call situational football. You spend all week working on your nickel passing game package to take advantage of third downs just like that. New slated downs to approach here from the 40. Taking the handoff, now Wilson. Bails out of the pocket quick. Escapes the sack. Tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick. You know, his internal clock right there told him it was time to escape, and good thing he listened to it. He was able to make something out of nothing and at least move them forward. Second and three now. Trying to get outside here with Harris. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. That's what I call a healthy return on investment. You run the toss play, looking for positive yards, looking to move the sticks, and I'm looking for that to be called again. Football on that 47-yard line, first down. Now a run with Harris. And he'll be met near the line to limit the game to a yard. That was Denzel Ward who brought that play to an end. Manages just a yard on first down. Now it's going to be second and nine. I don't mind that call on the early downs. Give that defense something to think about. You got the inside run between the tackles. And whether it's jet sweeps or a little swing pass, or in that case, a toss, make sure you threaten to the outside. And they stop him after a good run that takes him down inside the 40. That's going to go down as a gain of seven. Now they're going to have third and two. That's a run that you'll take the result in the NFL every time. A nice play, a solid game, but it's also a run that you know and you may come back to because if you were that close to breaking off an explosive one, you really break the backs of the defense. Wilson to throw on third and two. Makes the grab in bounds left side. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! The Steelers take a 13-point lead. George Pickens the touchdown. His second scoring catch of the game. Now the second time we've had the privilege of calling a touchdown pass to him in this opening half, Brock, and you're starting to get the feeling that he isn't done yet. Well, but defensively, Kate, you got to do something different. It's kind of like a pitcher who gives up a home run and then a second home run to that same guy. You are not going to give him a pitch to hit, and this defense has got to start taking this receiver away. Boswell to add the PAT. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Steelers double their lead to 14. Now Boswell on to send this away. He fields it from the eight. This return makes it up to the 25. The Browns with their offense back out there as Nick Chubb returns to the field. And the touchdown's got to keep coming for him as they still trail here.
And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Here's Winston. Into the hands of Tillman. Complete. And this one gets to the 33-yard line before it stops. That is a textbook first down completion. Sets up second and very manageable and creates space to take that shot downfield. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Winston to throw it. Connection made to Judy. A nice gain of 13 yards as it brings up a first down. Okay, when Bill Walsh was implementing the drag route with the 49ers in the 80s, it sounded the same way as it did with Mike Holmgren and me with the Seahawks in the 2000s versus man on a drag route run away. You see zone coverage, settle down, give your quarterback his numbers, and you can find a completion just like that. Receiver in motion, headed right. Oh, look at this. They give on the jet sweep. And he'll have it down to the 44-yard line. Let's see what they want to do here, partner. It's second and inches. Winston looking to throw. Finds him over the middle. And he'll get them enough for a first down. And those are the completions they rely on from their passing game. Brown's fighting the clock now, trying to hurry back to that line. Here's Winston to the air. And disaster averted. He knocks away the deep ball incomplete. You know, ball skills are not just a selling point for receivers entering the draft. Teams want defenders, especially in this day and age of the passing game, who can make plays on the ball, too, especially on these deeper throws. He doesn't swat that one away. We could be looking at a huge game. Second and ten now. Throw reeled in by Najoku. And he gets down to the 24 before he stops. That play good for 17 and a first down. Good offenses. Okay, good play callers know how to utilize their personnel. They know where they wanted him. They wanted him on the route in space where he could make that initial play comfortably, but then go to work after it. They'll come up first and 10. To throw, here's Winston. Chubb brings it in. And he's out of bounds inside the red zone, just short of the 15. These intermediate gains, that's the wheelhouse for these two to connect on. Start the series off well, and it sure keeps the defense on its toes in case they try to load up and just simply cover the receivers. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. From the 17. He brings it in. And he's going to be tackled, but still all the way down to the six. Now we're going to get an offensive timeout, so that's their first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. They'll break the huddle and come up on first and goal. Winston now. Escapes the pocket. And he's able to get it to the two before the stop. Well, this is in every quarterback's tool belt. Even the ones not regarded as the best movers and shakers. But, Kate, to play QB in the league today, you've got to be able to do this. If you've got nobody open, still get some positive yards with your legs. Ball at the two here for second and goal. Chubb. And he's not going to reach the end zone. They bring him down at the one. Now a timeout's called. Cleveland using its second. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. They've held him out twice. Here we go. Third and goal. Looking for a throw here. He's on the move. And he has the Cleveland touchdown. The Browns make it a one-score game before halftime. 
Wow, great work there by the quarterback. The play broke down, didn't really have much of a choice other than to escape and improvise, and in the end, Brock, the best call he could have made. Yeah, and you can do it in different ways in today's NFL, right? The, the Tom Brady's just recently retired. He did it with his brain. He did it with his mind, but you've got to be able to improvise, as you said. you got to be able to create when a play breaks down, and when you can put six on the board, man, does that infuse your offensive group with confidence. PAT is up and good from Hopkins. And the Browns chop the lead in half. It's down to seven. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Patterson now to return it. And he's brought down just inside the 25 on the return. The Steelers returning their offense and this running back to the field. And I'd say the ROI on his early touches have made him a, a pretty good investment for first-half work. He's gotten off to a great start here. They've got first down here, but just 18 seconds to work with. Yep, as expected, they go to the ground to start this one off. And this one's brought to a halt at about the 36-yard line. It's a gain of 12 there. And that's a Steelers first down. That brings us to the break. The Steelers taking a lead into the visiting locker room. Now we'll send you south to Orlando for a check-in around the league via Jonathan Coachman and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, what you got for us? All right, Kate, thanks very much. Back to you and Brock in a bit. But first, time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. All right, thank you, Coach. And we are back and about set to begin the second half. Well, if you love high-scoring games, no doubt you have been glued to your television so far. And no signs of slowing down as we begin our second half. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. The visitors and George Pickens set for this next possession. And he finds himself across an important benchmark for yards this season after that last drive. He stayed pretty busy this season, and the numbers show just that. They're out and set, first and ten. Hands it to the receiver here in motion. Oh, look at this sweep. Breaks the tackle, green grass ahead. And he's going to be brought down at the 42. They gain 14 on the play. And he'll bring up a Pittsburgh first down. It just feels like any time this guy touches the ball, it's a big play waiting to happen. He could be lined up wide or when they use him as a runner. If someone doesn't get a hand on him quick, he's gone. First down throw from Wilson. Completed here to Pickens. And that's good for a gain of five. Hauled to the ground by Jordan Hicks. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. From the 46. Escapes the pocket. He tucks it and takes off. Eight yards on the gain, and the drive continues forward. You know, before the snap, you know, right before the snap, you may have to take off if the read isn't there. That was a great adjustment made at the perfect time for the first down. 
New set of downs for him from the 46. Going to Harris to start the half. And he's only able to power this forward for about three yards. Got to be rush hour, Kate, because there's a whole lot of traffic up the middle right there. He ran right into some gridlock, and he could only manage a few yards at most. Second down now, seven to go. From the 43. Austin's there to haul it in. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. They're going to move the chains after a big play, 39 yards. One thing we don't have in football is we don't have that radar gun. But if we did, Kate, this is the kind of throw when you throw it that deep outside the numbers that requires a serious fastball, serious arm strength, and he just showed it off. Big play got him to the doorstep, Brock. Four more yards now in goal to go. Harris is across the line for the Pittsburgh touchdown. The Steelers grow the lead coming out of halftime. Najee Harris, the touchdown. Those defensive coaches got to be hot, Brock. That was a touchdown that shouldn't have happened. That tackle should have ended it. You try bringing down one of these NFL running backs <laughs> in, Miss Kate. Okay, touche, touche, partner. <laughs> they see that goal line. They smell that goal line. It is no sure thing to try to bring down one of those horses before they find pay dirt. Boswell to add the PAT. The point after splits the uprights. And the Steelers double their lead to 14. Now Boswell on to send this away. Fielded at the 7. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. Cleveland's offense all set to take over. And this game might be going better if he could have some more time just to work back there. This pass rush has been all over them. Really keeps taking this offense out of any grooves that they've managed to get into. Okay, I like to say in life, there's energy givers and there's energy vampires. Yeah. And for this defense, these sacks right here, they're such energy givers. And man, it's like a vampire sucking the juice out of an offense. Yeah, I love that. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Second half's going to start with a run by Chubb. And they'll take him down at the 43-yard line. That play gains 15, and it moves the sticks. Kate, don't think for a second this is time you step off the gas. You can feel this defense, right? They're on their heels. And now is the best chance to go push the envelope and get aggressive. A jolt to start that drive. They're up near the 45-yard line. First down, and they go right back to it. And he'll bowl his way ahead for a four-yard pickup. Well, I'll steal a line from one of my buddies, but I'm going to quote him. Mark Slareth, two-time Super Bowl winner, says, if you want to run the ball, you got to keep running the ball. And that's a perfect example of it. Don't get tired. Don't get mad at gaining four yards. It's a run that can set up even more in the run game. Here's Chubb on second down. And they're on him after about a two-yard gain. That stop made by T.J. Watt. He gets a couple, and it'll bring up third down. Throwing from the gun here. And even on third down, he sees no choice other than to get rid of it. Not the play they wanted. It's going to be fourth down. 
You know, it's a point of emphasis and practice each and every week, no matter where we go. How are we going to attack the coverage on third down? Well, they chose the wrong play off that call sheet that time. The Browns are lining up to punt. The punt's away, and this one looking good. Angled this one for the sideline. And this will fly out of bounds to deny a return. They're going to mark it a little before the 20. The visitors down Russell Wilson headed back to the field now. And as we see some of the highlights from their showing, his work a big part of why they're in front right now. Having a nice, solid game as their offensive leader. I think we can say he's had a firm grip on the wheel and has really driven them to this advantage. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Russ now from the gun. Caught by Firemute. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. They pick up 20 yards there. And that's a Steelers first down. I think my favorite part was the magic he worked after the catch. The way he took the completion and made so much more out of it by adding all the extra yardage. First and 10 from the 41. They give to Harris from the gun. And he's officially in enemy territory now. They're going to give him the opposing 49. I got to really rack my brain, Kate, to remember a play, a run in this league that nice that doesn't end up getting an offense the first down. He did all he could to will this drive forward. In a good spot here, second and inches. Harris once more. And they had that one contained right at the line. The former first rounder Devin Bush making the play. It looked like they had it, but nope, no gain. And now they're just inches short for third down. These linebackers of today, they are so quick. They're so twitchy. You don't get a body on them in a hurry, they're going to stick you right at the line of scrimmage. Wilson on third down. That throw finds Pickens. And they'll get him down after he gets into the 48. Two yards on the pickup. And he'll bring up a Pittsburgh first down. You're not going to last long in the National Football League if you don't convert a good chunk of your third downs. Nice find there to continue the series. Now we're running for the first time with Jalen Warren. And he's into the front for a gain of about two. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Shotgun snap for Wilson. This ball's caught by Pickens. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. It's a 30-yard play, Brock, and they've got a fresh set of downs. From a great throw to a nice route and catch to moving the chains, there wasn't a whole lot not to like about that amazing play. Thinking touchdown here after that big play. We've got first and 10 from the red zone. Working inside the red zone. Pass taken in by Friermuth. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! The Steelers stretch their lead to a three-score advantage. Pat Fryer Muth, the touchdown. It seems like a lot of the time, Brock, even if the results aren't quite as flashy every rep, tight ends are even more reliable scores than a lot of receivers are when it comes to the passing game. Yeah, I would agree with that, but there's also a lot more real estate for them to work mm. with, right? Think of the receivers. they got to deal with the sidelines, that 12th defender. Many of these tight ends, they've got a ton of field to work with, and when they prove to the quarterback they could be a difference maker, they'll look for them. Boswell gets that point after to go. And the Steelers stretch their lead to 21. Go. 
Now Boswell on to send this away. Kickoff taken at the three. And in the end, he's able to get it to what used to be a touchback. It's at the 25 after the return. Now we see the Browns offense headed out. They're down 21 now after that last score and in need of a comeback as we work through this game. They'll get this drive started. First and 10. And off to Chubb to start the drive. No progress on first down, and that'll bring up second and 10. So close to a big loss of yards for those guys up front. One second sooner, and they got a tackle behind the line. But a stop to celebrate nonetheless. Second and 10. Need to get some positive yardage here. Staying on the ground here with Chubb. That's good room at the 35. And he's finally brought down up at the 48. Give him 24 on that play. And that's good for a Cleveland first down. I'll tell you what, Kay. One of the things I'm most proud of coming out of broadcast are my O-line buddies that will hit me up during the game and say thank you. Thank you for finally showing some love and giving some light to what those big boys are doing up front. I got to play with some of the best to do. I got to see it up close and personal. Because of it, I'll never forget it. And they just showed up on that run. Give him four that time, so six to go on second down. He'll expect more from himself on those type of plays, but there is nobody that's going to complain about that one. If you can do math, four plus four plus four equals a first down. Second and six coming up here. Job on the give, headed left. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. Hey, range? Range is not an optional feature for middle linebackers in today's game. Uh-uh, it's a prerequisite for the job. And this guy definitely has it. Followed that play from the start, and he ended it with a loss. A less than ideal third and eight here. Throwing from the gun. Pressure's there, and the steal curtain closes on him. And the defense comes through. That's going to back him up and bring up fourth down. Here's what I know. Uh, I know this one, Kate, from personal experience. After this one's over, QB, well, he's going to spend some time in that cold tub because he's been in so much time on the ground taking a beating today. This offensive line, this offense has got to find a way to protect the passer. Punting unit out now. It'll be Corey Bajorquez doing the honors. Wow, beautiful punt there. They have them backed up all the way to the two-yard line. The visitors back out on offense. They're running back, headed out once again. And I think we can agree the plan to keep him out of the end zone it hasn't quite worked so well for this defense, at least not yet. He scored twice, really been the one his group can turn to for a spark or a big play when they've needed it. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Carried by Harris here to start the drive. And he does not make it out of the end zone. Just couldn't find his way across. They contain him for the safety. Well, an assist to their punter on that one, Brock. I'm glad you said that, Kate. Absolutely right. Because it was that kick that set up the chance for that immediate safety. How many times do we sit with coaches over the course of the week and we hear it all the time? Marrying that defense and special teams. Defense and special yep. teams. It can be game mm -hmm. changers. And you don't know that play in any NFL game that could turn the tide. Well, we got to see the defense and the special teams marry together. And now we'll get to watch the offense take possession. So following the safety, Bronk, they're on now to begrudgingly send it away with a free kick. That's grabbed at the 10. And he'll get it up near the 38-yard line before going down. 
Here comes their offense out again. And I'm sure they're tired of bringing out the punter, Brock. They're hopefully going to give him some rest this time around and find some points to go after that lead. The Browns, nice field position here as they start out first and ten. They begin the drive with Chubb. And he's brought down after a tremendous effort just to get a couple of yards. Two on the pickup there, and it's going to be second and eight. Again, it's Chubb. And once again, he doesn't manage much before getting brought down. Give him about three yards, and now they're going to have third and five to figure out. They're going play action. Short pass caught by his tight end. And he made a bid for midfield there, but stopped at his own side at the 49. They get six and a first down as well. You know, Kate, they say a dog is a man's best friend. Well, a tight end that moves the chains on third down, that's a QB's best friend. First and ten from a yard shy of midfield. They'll give to Chubb on the option. He's able to drive that pile about a yard. Tackled by the venerable Cameron Hayward. Only gets a yard there to make it second and nine. Okay, this is why you got to be careful to just run it always on first down. You got to break your tendencies. The casual fan, well, that casual fan knew what was coming, but more importantly, this defensive front did too. Chubb again on second down. And he got it real close, but stopped just about a yard or so shy of that first down. That does not show up on any explosive stat sheet, but let me tell you, Kate, that's the real deal right there. You run for that kind of yardage consistently in the NFL, you do set yourself up for success. One yard, all that's needed. This is third and inches. Throwing is Winston. Complete beyond the marker. Pickup of two here, and that gives the Browns a first. Move the chains! Got to move them chains. Build momentum and keep that defense on its heels. First down now. Ball at the 39-yard line. A give to Chubb. Running left. And he gets this one down to the 30-yard line. Just a little short, but still a 9-yard pickup. That's going to bring up second and one. You know, Kate, these are some of the little hidden plays in a game, right? Doesn't look like a whole lot on the stat sheet, but A, it gets you good yardage. B, it sets up your play action. And C, most importantly, keeps that defense guessing. Now give right side to Chubb. And his short game gets them a new set of downs. Hey, Kate, you want to see a picture in the football dictionary of staying on schedule? That was it. And they've got themselves another first and ten. Here's Winston. Completed over the middle. And they have this well into the red zone now at the 15. Give him 13 on that play. And that's good for a Cleveland first down. You know, it sure seems like he knew exactly where he was going with that before the snap. That's a pre-snap decision that led to a post-snap first down. They run in from the gun with Chubb. And that carry only nets one on the plunge up the gut. The one thing I could say positive about the execution of that play is at least he didn't go backwards. They'll come to the line here, second and nine. Now it's a bootleg for him. Has it in close. Touchdown, Cleveland. 
Great opportunity to find a touchdown there, Brock, and they come through with six. Receivers want the ball everywhere on the football field. <laughs> but you start <laughs> yep. smelling the end zone, they really want their chance. And they will tell you as a quarterback, just give me an opportunity and I'll make a play. And he sure did. On his Hopkins for the extra point. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Browns shave some of the lead. It's down now to 12. Hopkins has it on the tee and is ready to send it flying. Patterson now to return it. He stopped on the return at the 27. The offense being led back out by its quarterback as they get geared up for their next possession. And on that last drive, Brock, he crossed a notable threshold in passing yards for the season. Always nice when you can reach one of those plateaus to look back on after the year is over. They're out and set, first and ten. Now start with a give to Harris. And he'll get it up near the 38-yard line before going down. And that one goes for a gain of 11. And that's a Steelers first down. Okay, this is why coaches across all levels of football harp on the importance of good, fundamental tackling, not just to hear themselves talk. Uh-uh, it's to make sure that when one of their guys has a chance to bring down a running back, they're able to do it and keep those plays from going any further. And this defense offering no room at all up the gut there, no gain. The former first-rounder Devin Bush making the play. Call it no gain on that run, and they face second and ten. You know, Kate, over the years I've heard running backs say there's just times you got to run in the darkness. And when linebackers fill that hole like that right in the middle of the field, he ran right into the darkness and the pain of that linebacker. Rolling left, finds, and they get to him as he was trying to make something happen. And that pushes him back, third down, coming up. In a situation like this, you got to be a fixer. I mean, this game is hard. And you get into passing, known passing situations, it gets even more difficult. But when you don't get rid of the ball and you take another sack, you make this third down a near impossibility. Five men in the secondary for the Browns. Third down coming. Wilson now from the gun. Getting out to his left. He's running for it. Just one quarter remaining in this one. This one not out of reach quite yet, but it is a two-score game to begin the fourth. The Steelers set to punt it. And he wants to hit his second effort just as well as he hit his first. Absolutely crushed his first punt, and here's another huge one. And he can't evade the coverage team for much. They stop him before he gets really anything on that return. It's a 61-yard punt that time. And the Browns will have their work cut out for them on this drive. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Trying to throw here out of the gun. That's into the hands of Moore. 
And he's got a decent game before being brought down. It's not just imperative that a quarterback knows man or zone. Same thing for a receiver, especially on a drag route. When he sees zone coverage like that, just settle down, find the soft spot, and give your quarterback a chance. Halfway to the marker, it's second and five. From the 21. Into double coverage. Ooh, don't want to do that, and he's there for the interception. Patrick Queen in to pick it off. Well, obviously not the cleanest game with now two interceptions, but here's the key. This is where mental toughness for a quarterback becomes so critical. And frankly, why some of the best QBs playing today have baseball in their background, because you flush your mistakes. Okay, you strike out, you throw an interception, but you got to go get it in that next series. Got to put these interceptions behind and press forward ahead. This offense headed back to the field, led by their receiver. They didn't add to their lead last time out. They punted it away, but still ahead and able to add to it here. Drive starts out with a first and ten. From the gun, it's Wilson. Finds him over the middle. And they're going to get this down to the four before being stopped. It's a real solid pickup, 12 yards, and it rewards him with a first and goal. I know the combine tries to test everything it possibly can physically, but I don't know how you test courage at the combine because there's nobody defending you. Nobody wants to hit you. But that was the epitome of courage to make that in cut and make the catch. Trying to run in, Harris has the Pittsburgh touchdown. The Steelers have likely locked up the win right there. Najee Harris, the touchdown. His third of the game on the ground. Well, Brock, you know this better than most. In baseball, it's three strikes and you're out. I know you experienced that a lot. But on the gridiron, you're feeling pretty happy, right? If you can strike the end zone three times in one game. Yeah, I'd rather go hockey and soccer. That's just a positive guy in <laughs> me. They call that a hat trick. It's worth celebrating. You. And yeah, they should celebrate this effort. Boswell to add the PAT. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Steelers go up by 19. Now Boswell on to send this away. Returning it from the four. Oh, he's shown some burst on this return. The tackle's made, so this drive will begin at the 34-yard line. The Browns and Jameis Winston ready to go once again on offense. And as we can see here, it hasn't been the easiest game for him to operate out there, right? Number of rough moments for him. This defense able to pick him off twice to highlight their performance against him. Here's first and ten from the 34. Trying to shake off the interception. He's looking to throw. Has him on the quick hitter. And they're going to bring him down just on the other side of midfield. It's a gain of 17 on that one. And that gives the Browns a first. It sure seemed like he knew exactly where he was going with that right off the snap. One play in, and this drive is already in enemy territory. To throw. Here's Winston. Catch is made down the right sideline. And they're going to haul him down a step before the 30, right at the 31. Give him 18 yards on that play, Brock, and it gets him a first down. Nice to see that connection, that chemistry working between the two of them. They've got first down from the 31. Winston to throw it. 
Got a man. It's Njoku. And they haul him down just a foot or two shy of the red zone. Sometimes you're looking to push the ball down the field. But as I've said before, the crumbs lead to a cookie. And you never go broke taking a profit. And those big tight ends will often find you those easy check down yards. Options are open here. It's second and inches. Connection made to Judy. They come through with a nice gain of 10 and a first down. They like to say it's about the Jimmys and the Joes. I think that's about the X's and the O's. That's a well-drawn-up completion that nets them a first down. They'll come up first and 10. Job running out of the gun. And he's got a nice game down inside the 10-yard line. Solid four-yard gain there, and now they've got second and six coming up. They'll come away happy getting that type of output on most run plays. It's a sign? Well, they're getting some good push up front, and this running back is seeing the lanes and paying them off. Second and six coming up here. Winston now. He's on the move. And he will score. It's a Cleveland touchdown. The Browns get it back to within two possessions. Great play by the QB there, Brock. The play broke down. He didn't have much of a choice other than to escape and improvise. And in the end, turned out to be the best call he could have made. It is such a necessary tool in today's NFL for that QB to put right in his tool belt, Kate. You know, in my day, you could be a blacksmith, right? You could you just do the job and stay in the pocket. Not anymore. You got to be an artist. And you got to be an artist that can create when things break down. And that's big time to get a touchdown out of it as well. Hopkins has it on the tee and is ready to send it flying. Patterson now to return it. And look at this return. They'll bring him down on the return as he gets this to the 33. This offense and their quarterback making their way back out there, ready to take over once again. And he has continued to own this defense and keep on throwing that football partner, making this performance one that he's going to remember, uh, but as you like to say, the defense would probably rather forget. Ball at the 33 for first down. A handoff for Harris, running right. And he found some running room for a nice game. Good run, gets him seven. That brings up second and three. That's what I call a rhythm starter right there. I mean, offenses love execution and plays like that on first down, Kate, because now that playbook is wide open. All options on the table for second down. Second and three. Finds his man. It's Van Jefferson. And they push this down to the opposing 47-yard line. They get 13 on the pickup, and he'll bring up a Pittsburgh first down. Well, that is pretty darn impeccable timing between the two. They hit a curl route of that length. It takes great anticipation and precision by the quarterback and the receiver on the other end, finishing it, doing his job. They'll toss it to Harris. And he's going to be bottled up after taking it down to the 43. Halfway there on first down, that brings up second and five. The humble five to six yard gain on the ground. Not a huge gain. Not a game changing play by any means. But one that keeps you on schedule and takes some of the starch out of that front seven. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. From the 43. This one is tipped away and incomplete. Good positioning to make a play on it. That forces third down. I'm just going to say maybe not the guy you want to pick on in coverage on this particular series gets a hand on that throw and knocks it away the next time well he could get two hands on it and take it the other way last pass unsuccessful and they have third down here Russ now from the gun 
cut by the open man. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. They pick up 20 yards there. And that's a Steelers first down. Well, that one was drawn up and delivered beautifully, efficiently. If it's not circled on the call sheet already, you better believe it is now. They are now set for a first and ten. Shotgun snap for Wilson. Throwing the out route complete. And he gets this down to the 13-yard line. They come through with a nice gain there. Gain of 10, first down. There's no routes on the old proverbial route tree, Kate, that takes more trust than throwing an out route. You're throwing it to a spot and believing your guy can get there. A new set of downs awaits him. Here's first and 10. Russ is cooking again. Why not go back to it again if it's working? Complete. And they'll get this down nearly to the end zone. Instead, stopped at the two. A nice pickup of 11 there, Brock. And they'll have first and goal to figure out. Yeah, these in cuts maybe aren't the hardest throws from a degree of difficulty, Kate. But it does take some courage as a quarterback to throw into congested spaces. But it can pay big dividends. No run with Harris is in touchdown Pittsburgh the Steelers make it a three score game in the fourth Najee Harris the touchdown his fourth total score of the game far from the first time we've broken down one of his touchdowns in this game partner but man they seem to get more impressive every time and I don't care Kate if they're all one yard plungers if you're up over 300 yards a four touchdown game will forever forever live among your greatest career yep. highlights you can go several games without even scoring one so to get four in one contest you'll never ever forget it point after up and good from boswell and the steelers go up by 19. Now Boswell on to send this away. That's going to be taken in at the 8. And he gets across the 30 before he's brought down. This offense headed out as we get a look at their running back. They'll try to emphasize what worked on their last drive, which ended Brock in a touchdown. It's a new set of downs for him at the 32. Winston. Finds the in route complete. And they'll make the stop up at the 46-yard line. Big gain, 14 on the play. And that's good for a Cleveland first down. It takes a certain level of fearlessness, craziness, to work over the middle of the field in this league. You're fighting through guys as you go, and all the while, you know you could take a lick at any time. Throwing is Winston. He goes back to him yet again. Complete. And they make the tackle at the 38. That's 16 on the pickup. And that gives the Browns a first. You'll often hear it said, in my life experience, it's true. The NFL is a game of matchups, so much more than any level. And these tight ends, we see it time and again, are such a matchup nightmare down the field. New set of downs for him at the 38. Here's Winston to the air. Too much lead on that throw. That falls incomplete ahead of his target. Well covered on that play. Really not a large window for him to sneak that throw in. connect on first it's second down here's Winston escapes the pocket he's running with it he made something out of that play for them everyone's so concerned with defending the pass 
They didn't quite keep tabs on what he was doing as a QB, and it gave him just enough room to run. Here they come. This is third and five. Winston looking to throw. That's Tillman. He's got it. And he's brought down. They're going to mark him at the 14. That play goes for 19 and a new set of downs. You know, Kate, over the years, I have heard defensive coordinators say, hey, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. You got to earn the right for me to call blitzes. And when you call a blitz and you don't get home and you don't hit the quarterback, you've earned nothing. The drive picks up here, first and 10. Here's Chubb up the middle. And he's brought down a little short. No, actually, they do give him the 10 yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to bring up second and six. He's got it on the bootleg. Has it down close. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Sometimes when you're just looking to move it forward, get some small yards on a throw, quarterback's best friend, security blanket. And when it's a big old tight end, that's an extra bonus. This offense in position now. It's first and goal. Chubb trying to run his way in. Is in. Touchdown, Cleveland. The Browns get it back to within two possessions. It's a Nick Chubb touchdown. It's what every player who scores a touchdown wants to do, Brock. He wants to get right back there and put another six on the board. I've never met an NFL player content with one end zone trip in a game. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, if you're content, you're not making it to this league. You get one, you're instantly thinking of another, and the fortunate few are able to actually deliver on it. On his Hopkins for the extra point. The point after splits the uprights. And the Browns shave some of the lead. It's down now to 12. Hopkins has it on the tee and is ready to send it flying. Patterson now to return it. They'll have decent field position to begin with here. Brock, he's tackled just beyond that 30-yard line. They've got first down from the 31. First play, they go quick out to the left, complete. And he's going to get this up close to the 40 before going out. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for in first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable, and then creates that space if you want to take a shot downfield. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Wilson now from the gun. And they push this down to the opposing 47-yard line. They'll get 14 yards and a new set of downs. As a quarterback, when you throw that curl route, you know it's a tight window, Kate. But the minute that DB turns and can't react to the throw, you put it right on your receiver's numbers. He comes back and gets it and moves the sticks. Football on that 47-yard line, first down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And he just gets rid of it. Knew he had a couple of plays left. Didn't want to take a risk there on first down. That is normally a gimme for this offense, these short throws. 
But the defense, well, they had just enough influence on that play to force the incompletion. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Wilson to throw again. Pass taken in by Fryermuth. And he has it to the 42 before they make the stop. So now here's third and five. Throwing again. Here's Wilson. Flushed out of the pocket. Oh, he's going to run for it. And he slides down with enough to pick up that first. He manages a gain of eight there. And he'll bring up a Pittsburgh first down. You know, Kate, back in the day, we had a slip and slide to practice for moments just like that. Actually practicing how to slide and get out of harm's way. Nice gain on the play. And denied that defense yet another chance to take a shot on him. From the gun, they go with Harris. And without much room, he's going to go down at the 32-yard line. Only two yards, and it brings up second and eight. From the 32. Caught by Fryermuth. And they bring him down after the play reaches the 26. Third and just two to go. Here's Wilson. That's caught for the first. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. And even 20 yards on the play, and it awards them with a first and goal. Well, that's a game that has its roots in preparation during the week. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday kind of stuff. Identifying ways to target the coverage and creating opportunities for big completions. First and goal now as they try to pad this lead. They'll put one of the tight ends in motion. And they'll let the clock run all the way down and expire. Must have lost sight of the play clock there, Brock, because the quarterback could have snapped it in time, but instead, they take the penalty. First and goal, now five yards tougher after that penalty. Running it after the penalty. And he powers through the middle for a gain of four. So that brings us to the two-minute warning in Cleveland. Steelers with a comfortable 12-point lead. Still lined up at the six. Here's second and goal. Trying it again with Harris. And they'll make the stop after a small push to the five. So quickly the defense burns a timeout here. 157 remaining in the game. Buckle up, it's third and goal. Russ is gonna cook here. Bails out of the pocket quick. And he carries it in for the touchdown. The Steelers have likely locked up the win right there. Russell Wilson with the touchdown. A lot of pressure on him in that moment, Brock. Find a way to score, don't let it go to fourth and goal. And he finds a way to come through and gets in the end zone for six. And how about the other side? Beating a defense right there as well. That group who was so close to pulling off the goal line stand, yet all that motivation wasn't enough to stop him on third and goal. Boswell gets that point after to go. 
And the Steelers go up by 19. Now Boswell on to send this away. Here's a return from the seven. And pretty solid field position starting out here, Brock. He's tackled at the 29. Their offense returning to the field for another possession. And this a final opportunity to make things a little closer in that final score. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Shotgun snap. They're going to throw. That one complete to Najoku. And he reaches the 35 before going out. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. To throw, here's Winston. Has him on the quick hitter. And he'll get it up to the 44. They get an even 10 on that play. And that's good for a Cleveland first down. Well, they got him down before he could do any more damage in terms of yards. That's no easy job, mind you, tackling a big tight end. But the main damage had already been done. He kept this drive going by getting beyond the line of game. Winston now. That's incomplete for the moment. We do have a flag down, but it might not be good news for their offense. That's usually where we see holding calls. He got a major fistful of jersey on that play, and it's going to end up costing him. Winston to throw it. Throw reeled in by Najoku. And he's going to bring it up to the 40-yard line before he stopped. You get this big old dude like him in the slot, it's an automatic mismatch advantage. You're training a little bit of speed, sure. But you sure do get a lot of size. And anytime he's in the slot, you got to assume the ball's going his way. Got to hurry this to the line. Here's second and 14. And this time they're going to get there, and they drop him. Now a timeout's called. Cleveland using its second. Still one more in their pocket to use. So a really tough spot here. This is third and a country mile. Throwing from the gun. A bit of desperation on this deep shot. And they really went for it on third down, didn't they? But the heave falls incomplete. Now they're facing fourth down. The trajectory of that ball changes while it's in flight. I'll tell you this, Kate. On shorter throws, these receivers are so good to adjust, can still bring it in. But over a long distance, a tip like that alters the course of the ball, and it sure makes it tough to adjust in time. Here he goes. Got to have this on fourth down. Trying to push it deep downfield. They can't connect as the coverage comes through with a fourth down stand. Hey, I get it. It's already over. But go down swinging. Unfortunately, that play, like so many of them today, Kate, has been pretty indicative of how this contest has gone. Now Pittsburgh's offense running back out for a new series. And taking a look at these highlights, Brock, just a reminder of the type of game that they have had throwing the football. It really has been the key to their success. Yeah, they've just not only stayed on schedule here, Kate. Man, they've made some music, right? Great mm. rhythm. Yeah. Not just ahead of schedule, but huge plays that followed. We've seen a lot of different looks and wrinkles throughout this performance, and it's been a joy to watch.
Victory formation here. Looks like they're going to take a knee on first down. He's down to a knee, and the Steelers getting ready to celebrate this victory. They could stop the clock now if they choose. In the final moments of the game, every second counts. If you're going to call a timeout, you want to be right next to that official to signal it in just as that knee goes down. Lining up to take a knee on second down. So the Steelers come in and take this on the road. And Brock, we all know any win is a good win, but playing against a division rival, oh, it always feels so much better dealing that one in the El Calo. These are the teams that know you best, Kate, mm -hmm. but also the ones that you know best. So yep. yes, it is just a little bit sweeter when you take care of business in your own division. So for my partner, Brock Heward, and our entire crew, I'm Kate Scott, saying this has been the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody. The Steelers are winners, as with that, we'll sign off from Cleveland.